Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day two of the International Peace Conference. I trust you have all eaten well last night and slept well. We have another full day today. We're going to start today's session with Miss Sophie Gu, who is the Dep Deputy General Manager of the Suzhou Good Ark Electronics Proprietary Limited. Could I ask Sophie to come up? Please welcome her. Good morning, everyone. I am very happy to be here to talk about the implementation or application of traditional Chinese culture in the making of a happy company or a happy enterprise. In our company, we apply traditional Chinese culture in the running of our company every day. Here you can see the Chinese character which stands for family, jia. And uh, we have eight models for our um, for the application of traditional Chinese culture. And you can see these eight models on the screen. And uh, I'm not going to um, tell them in details about all different models. Uh, but if you are interested in it, of course, you can go to our website and uh, uh, check on it. But today here, I'm going to tell you some uh, examples, concrete examples, to show you how we apply traditional Chinese culture in our daily lives. Here, you can see a picture of a tree. If you want to, ha you want to have this tree uh, grow and bear fruit, of course, you will have to start well with humanistic education. Every time when some groups or individuals come to visit our company, they have the feeling that our company is more like a school because we care a lot about education. We teach our employees to be dutiful towards their parents, and every employee treats all their colleagues' parents their own as their own parents. And we also tell parents uh, that they should be the best teachers for their children. And uh, we have a lot of concrete measures to apply this uh, theory. Uh, for example, we have organized summer camps for our employees with their families. As I have mentioned, that education is very important in our company because in China there is a, an old saying which says education is foremost in building a country and guiding its people. And when we talk about education, we talk about moral ethics, casual uh, causality. And uh, we teach our uh, employees how to become a caring and good person. And here you can see uh, the pictures of our employees in their classrooms. Actually, we have over 30 classrooms where our employees can study. And every year, we have a week of intensified, a very intensive uh, training uh, program. And uh, we want our employees uh, to become a happy employee in their family. They should become they should become a good daughter, a good good 
son, and uh, they should also become a good wife or a good husband. And when they have children, they be, they should be good parents. Only by doing this can they be a good employee or a good manager in the company. And. Uh, we also ask them to lead a low carbon lifestyle and uh, they should also be a good practitioner of traditional Chinese uh, culture. And is it effective, this kind of training program? Does it have any results, concrete results? Of course, many, are, many of our companies have already got rid of their old uh, habits like smoking and excessive drinking. And uh, today they are uh, living a very healthy lifestyle. They do, many of them have become a vegetarian and uh, they also lead a low carbon lifestyle. And uh, many of our female employees uh, strive uh, to become good daughter-in-law because we have a special training program uh, for these married female employees. Uh, for example, you can see uh, in this picture uh, here uh, the husband uh, had uh, some uh, problems in the past because he was gambling and uh, uh, their family, um, uh, all their family members suffered from it and they almost, he was almost uh, divorcing uh, his wife because of all his problems. But now after uh, our training program, uh, the lady or the wife has uh, become a different person. Now she cares more about uh, what her husband wants in his life and not only about how much money he earns. Uh, so they have reconciled. So you can see the change of the wife has changed the whole family. The husband has become a better person and now they are a happy family. So this is a very concrete result of our training and uh, uh, education. And here you can see on the picture, uh, here are some children uh, washing the feet of their parents. And uh, you can see the, first, the, the girl at the front, uh, she is washing uh, the feet of her stepfather because in the past she uh, was not even willing to call him dad. Uh, she called him uncle, but now after our training program, they have become a very happy family. And uh, also, uh, in the operation of our uh, company, we have uh, seen the change of, of behavior among our employees in even their daily work. Because uh, in the past, for example, uh, a lot of exchanges among employees took place by emails, by the internet. But now they all sit in a con in in an office, and they have more exchanges. Uh, and. Uh, here you can see uh, uh, an old machine. Uh, this machine was bought by the company in 1989, and um, it uh, became obsolete and uh, it was out of service. Actually, we, the company didn't use uh, the machine anymore starting from 2002. Uh, but uh, today we have uh, taught, uh, taught our employees to respect, to love everything around them. So our employees have decided uh, to find a solution to fix the machine again. And, um, and it, they made the machine work again. So uh, not only do our employees care about their families and care about their colleagues, they also care about machines and everything surrounding them. And here is another example of a sand blowing machine. Uh, the machine is supposed to uh, function for six years, but uh, we have already used it for 11 years. And after 11 years, we actually we were uh, able 
able to, uh, we, we could have asked, or we could have asked the manufacturer to provide us with a new machine or new components, but we decided uh, to treat it as a person, as a family member. Uh, for example, if your uh, family member uh, has problems with his or her heart, of course you will not abandon uh, your family member. You will uh, do everything uh, within your ability to fix the problem for uh, your family members. So here, uh, in this example, again, our employees uh, talked uh, to uh, the manufacturer of uh, the machine uh, to fix it, to make it new again. And uh, the boss of the manufacturing company was very touched by our employees' attitude, and he even came to visit us. He wanted to see uh, what's going on in our company, why our employee had this kind of uh, reaction, this kind of relationship with the machine, and he was very touched uh, by what he had seen, and he uh, decided to help us to fix the machine and make it new. And, uh, also, in our uh, company, uh, we uh, do everything to prevent our uh, to prevent our employees uh, get, uh, getting uh, some chronic diseases because we encourage them to uh, live a very healthy life. For example, we encourage them uh, to have less. Uh, animal meat intake, and they have uh, many of them have already um, adopted an, a vegetarian diet. And uh, if uh, if we can we convert uh, the reduction of uh, carbon emission coming from uh, our employees' diet, we can say that we have had a reduction of uh, CO2 absorbed by over 1 million tree in a year in our uh, company. And uh, in our company, we also have a volunteer uh, fund, and uh, over 87 percent of our employees have volunteered uh, to uh, work in communities. And uh, as I mentioned, as I had mentioned before, that we treat every uh, senior person as our own parents, and we treat every child as our children, and uh, we also care about public uh, properties. Uh, and uh, we do a lot of uh, cleaning uh, work uh, for the public. And uh, we also have a, a demonstration program uh, to help uh, those left behind the children. And, uh, we have also uh, participated in the city of uh, Weihai's project to have a model city for food safety. And, uh, also, we have participated in the national vocational uh, training uh, program. So uh, through all these examples, you can see that uh, uh, you can see how in our company we apply traditional Chinese uh, culture, and uh, our model uh, has been well known all over uh, China, even abroad. Many companies and uh, individuals have come uh, to visit us. Uh, for example, here uh, you can see uh, Mr. Wu uh, from um, South Korea, as well as Mr. Naza uh, from um, India have uh, visited our company. So now I would like to uh, show you a clip of what these visitors have said after visiting our company.
네, 존경합니다. 또 같이 하신 여러 노동자 사람, 자, 여러분들 노동자 위원장님 감사합니다. is that in this high-tech company that the emphasis is on high touch, it's on people. Uh, and everything that we do is done with, by, for, and through people. And by focusing on the people, when the people are right, the world is right. And I've said this for many years, it's part of my own personal philosophy, what I have observed in the Good Art Corporation through Chairman Wu, through Sophie Gu, uh, through all of the leadership of this company, is the implementation of this at a very deep level, taking it down. And the second point I would like to say, uh, today is also, I changed my image, I changed my opinion to change when I was uh, still young uh, until yesterday in my making in my perception about the, the China's culture uh, it's only yes uh, I mean uh, money, money and money but when I visit China today and this is the first time I, I visit China my opinion uh, really wrong and I enjoy today because uh, I can understand what really uh, China is. Uh, China, philosophy of China, uh, as Gladys mentioned to, to me, very deep, more deeper than many cultures I think in the world. Especially um, Mr. Wood uh, main person to Mr. Wood I think not only the best manager but also the best leader. So in a way, in a way, we ourselves play as a role of a bridge between Eastern and Western philosophies and cultures. So, uh, Mr. Wu, we have a say, uh, we say small is beautiful, meaning something which is small can be as influential than something big. So for me, the most beautiful example and experience today was to see someone with so much talent to give this talent to the betterment to the other people. Because you, with your 2,500 employees and with your 2,000 happy children, have created an example which can be followed everywhere in the world. Uh, I have heard the words of uh, the, His Excellency, the former Prime Minister of Japan, and also uh, the religious uh, leader from Indonesia, and they were talking about Asian values. I would say that uh, we in the West tend to think very often that the best values we can find in the West. I never thought so. I always thought so that we have to look for all the values in the world 
and then we have to combine and really make kind of in a, a new establishment of values. Because, for example, when I speak about the Buddha, I think about Jesus Christ. When I speak about Confucius, you know, I can think about many philosophers uh, in my own culture. So we can find the common grounds in these different philosophies. But the most striking example you have given us here during this half a day, I think, that for you, the importance is the person, the human being. I've seen many companies around the world, many good business leaders, but I must say that here in Good Arc, I found something which I've never quite seen before, unique. For me, it's a unique experience to be here. I recognize some of the good concepts here, and I can give them a name the Western world has created. The dedication to efficiency is clearly throughout the operation, which is a necessary precondition in many regards. But the notion of efficiency here has a much deeper meaning because it goes into individual human beings. And uh, the empowerment and for individuals to belong part to a family, and the term family was used so many times, is something I have not quite met like this anywhere before. Not quite. Closest it comes to small family-owned enterprises like the Hidden Champions, they function in a similar way. Uh, very strong alignment with the CEO, with the leader, very strong dedication, very strong caretaking of the business and what goes beyond. Uh, but these are just similarities. They do not explain the uniqueness of Kodak. We've made uh, different endeavors with this new form of corporate management, as you, you've seen, and we've presented our examples and described our experiences to other companies, and lots of companies have uh, uh, used this as the basis for their changes. For example, in Singapore, in Singapore, we're interested in having feedback from people who have had a British education. And we've seen there's been influence from our experiences there, and there have been changes made to companies working in Singapore. At the moment, Harvard Business School is uh, studying the Chinese model and is studying our company. There are researchers from Harvard Business School who are studying this. Last year, Madam Mayor visited our company. And she met members of our staff. And we set up a special education camp for happy corporations. And uh, we visited uh, her business school, and she saw that there had been changes made in companies in Singapore. If it were possible to implement this new model in some 20 Chinese companies, then we would uh, be able to get people to believe in this new form of management. But we are confident that we can not only solve problems encountered by companies, but also take up challenges which face all of society. The most important thing is to learn, to put uh, the learning into practice 
and to change theory into practice in everyday life so that we can have a proper belief in this Chinese uh, cultural approach. And I would like to share our motto here with you, and that is sharing the teachings of sages. Thank you very much for that presentation, Sophie. Um, we are talking not just about the political and theoretical aspects of peace and harmony, as some of the presentations yesterday and Sophie today, we've looked at some of the practical applications where by small actions in our communities, in our homes, in our businesses, we can start to build uh, a, a peaceful and prosperous and just society. So thank you very much again, Sophie. It's been lovely to have you here talking to us. Now, we're, um, our next presentation, we have His Excellency Mr. Andrian Mangiato, who is just arriving with the master. So um, we're just waiting for them to walk in. Does anybody have any questions about either the... Uh, proceedings of the conference or perhaps even a question for Sophie after her talk. Um, anybody would like to follow up on any of the aspects of what Sophie has presented? Sorry to put you on the spot, Sophie, but would anybody like to ask Sophie? Yes. Um, I was just going to say that it's uh, very interesting to hear what you had to say. And we're noticing now in the Western world that people are actually being considered as part of a company. Uh, in the past, it has been more about production resources, you know, return on investment and everything. But it's very interesting to notice that you've implemented something in your company. And now, uh, and we are observing this in, in, the, in the world outside too, that they, they are beginning to realize that human beings are the biggest investment in the company. So it's... Uh, Good to hear what, what you're doing. And Redland City Council does do some wonderful work for their staff too, even if I do speak on behalf of my husband there. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Sophie, would you like to respond? Uh, so uh, I should do in Chinese, okay? Yes. Well, thank you very much. And let me say that in our society or in our company, when we started our uh, Happy Company program, uh, there were in China many companies that doubted uh, this uh, endeavor because many of these other companies were primarily interested in their balance sheet or in their profit line because this was their day-to-day -day challenge. However, we believed at our company that uh, these were elements that were uh, second in line as far as priority because we believed our employees' well-being was more important uh, so that uh, our staff and other uh, members of the company would uh, feel as if they were at home in a family while at our company and uh, thus also able to contribute. Uh, so after a few years, we were able to see that actually our bottom line, our profits increased uh, considerably, 500% yearly in profit increases. And of course, our financial situation uh, was uh, far improved. Initially, our objective, though, was not our profit line, but the well-being of our staff. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie. Um, this is a little plug for working with researchers and working with academics. If you can provide the evidence of the social but also the economic benefits of investing in people, your argument is much stronger to politicians and to other agencies that people are important. It's not just about the economics, that um, uh, there's a small is good, is, is um, a term that was used uh, a lot. And a favourite author of mine, uh, Manfred Max Neef, talked about human-scale development. So while we talk about global development, 
he said that our development needs to focus at that human level rather than um, just looking at our country or the world. We, we need to look at people again. Everybody is important. And I think you've highlighted that your business is doing that, Sophie, and uh, perhaps uh, we, we can come and work for your business because it sounds like a good place to work. Uh, any other comments there? Any other comments on the human scale development concept? All right, well, in that case, um, I think we'll welcome the master and uh, who else have we got there? Uh, His Excellency Toki Andrea Mangiato.